Hey, what's up? I'm Michael Sorrentino, and today I'm going to be talking about the ISO Acoustics ISO 155 stands. If this is your first time here, which it probably is because I haven't made a video like this before, I'm just an average bedroom guitarist that wants to be a mastering engineer. I've recorded my own music for about a decade now. I recorded my first album with my band Blame This Season titled Interconnect when I was about 18. The experience I had making that album with my friends was one of my fondest memories and it really solidified my love for mixing and mastering. Recently I've been mixing and mastering other people's music and I really enjoyed that. So if you have a song that needs mastered, I'll be more than happy to work with you. I'll link my Fiverr page in the description down below if you want to see my mastering services. Also I've got songs that are out and if you listen to them, thank you. Appreciate it. Now let's get to the video. These isoacoustic speaker stands are platforms that are meant to decouple the surfaces of the monitor, the stands, or the mixing console in which the speaker is resting upon. Placing your studio monitor directly onto your desk or your mixing console inherently changes the sound of your studio monitors by boosting or cutting resonant frequencies of the physical materials that make up your desk or stands. I tested this basic concept by just feeling the monitor stands as they were playing music, and I could definitely feel vibrations coming from my monitors into the stands. Even though the monitors themselves were resting on about an inch of foam on top of the monitor stands, I could still feel the vibration. I got a baseline frequency response of my room using the Dayton Audio EMM6 calibrated measurement microphone going into my Focusrite 4i4 interface. To capture the response, I used the RoomEQ Wizard software. This isn't a tutorial on how to use REW, but I highly recommend it because it's free and easy to use. You can easily find videos on setting up the measurement procedures. Uh, companies like GIK Acoustics and Music City Acoustics have great tutorials on this. Before testing, I tried my best to get accurate measurements of my monitor placement to ensure the most accurate comparison. I measured the distance between the corners of my monitors and the walls next to it. For the height, I measured the bottom of the tweeter grill. Then using REW, I measured each studio monitor separately, making sure to stand in the same place in the room for every measurement. I'm going to be honest and say that I don't know if capturing the frequency response and looking at the waterfall graphs in REW is the best or most scientific way to go about testing this. This is really just an attempt to understand what I'm hearing. For those that don't know what a waterfall graph is, it's a two-dimensional frequency response graph that has a z-axis, and the z-axis represents time. When you look at a waterfall graph, you can see on the time axis which frequencies are lingering around the longest. And the ones that are lingering the longest usually coincide with standing waves, room modes, or um, you can see reverb or flutter echo. If you're curious about what room modes or standing waves you might have in your room, you can always look up the room mode calculator online. All you gotta do is just enter the dimensions of your room and it'll spit out frequencies that may be problems for you. Which is why you measure your room with a calibrated microphone in the first place. Let's take a look at the measurements I got. So here I have pulled up the foam before measurements and right away I could tell something was weird with these measurements. If you look at the left side here, you can see above 2K that there's a pretty big difference in your frequency response and initially I didn't know why that was. And you can also see around, let's, what is this? 116, um, 89, that there are some pretty big dips or nulls in the frequency response, probably coinciding with room modes. For now, let's just look at the right side just to make things a little easier. For a small room like mine, this room is only about 11 by 12 foot, probably isn't too far off from what you may see in your own small room. Large dips in these frequencies because of standing waves. But overall, I'd say there's one. And give or take 8 or 9 dB, which is a small room, it's not going to be perfect, and I still have plenty of treatment to go. But if I compare this chart to the measurement with the ISO stands, you can see there are some differences. Interesting, in the low frequencies underneath 80 Hz, because I have a subwoofer taking care of those frequencies and the crossover is set at 80 Hz. It technically shouldn't be any different, but it is slightly. Not really sure why that is, if I'm being honest. I see small differences right here at 650. There's some difference at 570 over here, over there. So ISO is green. The biggest difference I see is really at 10K. There's a about a three or four dB difference. I'm not sure what would have caused these differences in the readings here. Maybe it was just the slightest bit difference in my monitor placement when I put up on the ISO stands, I'm not sure. And, get this, I forgot to load up the calibration file for my microphone, so this isn't even 100% accurate. But for the sake of the before and after, both files don't have the calibration, it's, it's alright. So here, we have the waterfall graph, 
and what I was saying before, here's the axis where the frequencies were that we saw already, but the difference is the time frequency here. You can see that it reaches out all the way to about a second. So because my room is somewhat treated, I have panels on my left, right, and I have a cloud. I'm not seeing hardly any reflections, which is great. Um, there's a little something right here at 400. And if I had to guess, maybe that's having the reflections bounce off the desk or something like that. So here are the main issues. It's a small room, so there's going to be a lot of this. And I have corner traps, but they're not as deep as they could be. I also had the air conditioning on when I was measuring this because I live in Las Vegas and the AC never turns off. And I'm guessing these right here at 160-ish and 117 and the low 20s are the air conditioning because it's a very constant frequency resonating here. Room modes, if I had to guess, are probably this one at 60 and this dip here at 120. So if I look at the foam side, you're not really going to see huge differences as far as the time domain goes. It's a little different, but maybe that's just the AC. All these measurements are pretty interesting to look at. Um, I'm really not an expert. I know the fundamentals of room acoustics, but I'm, I can get a, get a pretty good idea of what I need to work on as far as room treatment goes. Another way we can look at this is the spectrogram which is pretty much the same thing, but from the uh, top-down view. This only goes up to 740. I wanted to see what was going on on the low end. And I can see, so here's before, there's a, there's a resonance here at 160, which we saw earlier. But interestingly enough, it's only a small spike here with the isoacoustics. So coming back to the SPL readings, if I load up the left side again, um, I'm glad I took the readings because I figured out why there's this discrepancy between the left and the right high frequencies. On the back of the HS8, there's a plus 2 dB high frequency switch, and at some point that got flipped up. So that explains why the left side is brighter. But I didn't really notice that because maybe it was just like that for a long time, and my ears got used to it, so I fixed it. <coughs> <laughs> to me, the results are harder to see but easier to hear. After placing my speakers on the isoacoustic stands, I noticed a big difference in the clarity of the stereo image and just the overall sound, honestly. I was hearing more detail in the low mids and the upper mids as well. It was almost like there was some smearing going on in the overall sound stage. It's hard to describe how much it actually affected what I was hearing. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the vibration coming through the speakers into the stands, when I was playing music, I could feel absolutely zero vibration in my monitor stand. It was amazing. It's almost like the speakers are floating in free space, which is great because that's kind of what you want. So this was definitely a good purchase, and I recommend you getting them if you have your speakers sitting on stands or your desk. At the end of the day, these are just a small piece of the pie and will definitely improve your listening experience. If you've had a similar experience using the ISO Acoustic Stands or their pucks, I'd love to hear about your perspective on what they did for you in your room. And if you're more experienced than I am at reading room measurements, let me know what you saw in the measurements. Final thoughts? Great purchase. You should get them. Hit me up for your mastering needs, and thank you for watching.